September is a busy seed planting month in Florida. Since September is the month that we're transitioning into fall, we can plant both warm season and cool season crops in many parts of Florida. For many Floridians, September is the end of the planting window for most warm season crops. This is because we want to get as many harvests as we can from our warm season crops before we get our first frost or freeze, which in my area is potentially in late December. When deciding how late to plant your warm season vegetables, it helps to know when your first average frost date is so you can plan accordingly. I'll put a link in the description below the video to an interactive map where you can find your first average frost date. Warm season crops that can be started in September are beans, cucumbers, eggplant in Central and South Florida, peppers in Central and South Florida, squash, and tomatoes in Central and South Florida. The letters DS I noted next to some of the crops stands for direct sow, which means that it's best to plant the seeds directly in the ground or in the container they will be growing in instead of sowing seeds in small pots or trays and then transplanting them later. Cool season crops can be started in September in North and Central Florida, but it's still very hot and buggy, so it's best to wait until late September, especially in Central Florida. Some planting guides say that South Florida can start some of the more heat tolerant cool season crops in September, but I see conflicting information on this and in my opinion, it seems like it's still too hot in South Florida to start cool season crops in September. It never hurts to experiment with planting early, but South Floridians are likely to have more success if they wait until October to start most cool season vegetables. Even in Central Florida, a lot of people prefer to wait until October to start cool season crops. Keep in mind that there's no rush to start cool season vegetables because they can grow happily all winter long in Florida and they can be planted continuously throughout the fall and winter. Cool season vegetables that can be started in September in North and Central Florida include arugula, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, collards, endive, kale, lettuce, mustard, onions and shallots, radish, spinach, strawberries, Swiss chard, and turnips. Although it's still a bit too early for South Florida to start planting cool season vegetables, it's still warm enough to plant heat-loving tropical vegetables like amaranth, calabaza, chaya, ginger and turmeric, katuk, lufa, okra, papaya, passion fruit, pineapple, seminal pumpkin, southern peas, sweet potatoes, and tropical spinaches. Warmer parts of central Florida, like near the coast, may also be able to plant some of the fast-growing tropical vegetables like tropical spinaches, but most of central and north Florida will be getting too chilly for most tropical vegetables in the next couple of months, so it's not really recommended for central and north Florida to plant tropical vegetables this late in the year. Herbs that can be planted in September include anise, basil, borage, cilantro, chives, dill, fennel, lavender, lemon balm, marjoram, mint, oregano, rosemary, sage, and thyme. In my garden, I'll be finishing up my warm season vegetable plantings for the first three weeks of September. I'll direct sow beans, cucumbers, squash, and zucchini, and I'll transplant the pepper and tomato seedlings that I started from seed in August. After the autumn equinox, in the last week of September, I'll plant my first batch of cool season vegetable seeds to transplant into the garden in mid or late October. My first round of cool season plantings will include beets, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, collards, kale, lettuce, onions, and Swiss chard. 
In my garden, I'll be planting lots of herbs in September, including basil, borage, cilantro, dill, fennel, mint, oregano, and sage. A lot of these herbs do better in cooler weather, so I'll be waiting until later in the month to plant most of these. Pretty much everything except for the basil and the oregano I'll plant at the end of September. Fall is right around the corner, but for most of September, it's still very hot and humid, and it's still the rainy season. These weather conditions promote plant diseases and are very favorable for the bugs, which are still occupying our gardens in huge numbers. This is why some people choose to start their seedlings indoors or else wait until the weather gets cooler and drier in October to plant outside. When planting outdoors, it helps to plant in soil that has good drainage and to mulch to keep the soil cooler and so that the soil doesn't splash up onto the leaves of the plants. It's also a good idea to water plants at the root zone instead of on the leaves so that the leaves don't stay wet, which invites disease. Or else water in the morning so that the leaves can quickly dry off in the sun. Obviously, if the plants are out in the open, the rain is gonna get the leaves wet and you can't control that. But it helps if you leave enough space in between your plants that the air can circulate and dry the leaves faster. The insect pressure stays pretty intense until the weather starts to turn cold. So it's a good idea to monitor your seedlings for insect damage and pick off any pests that you see. A lot of bugs can be controlled just by hand picking, but when the pests are too small to pick by hand or there's too many of them to keep up with, there are some organic pest control options that can be used. Many bugs can be killed by spraying soapy water on them, but soapy water can also be harsh on the plant's leaves, so whenever I use it, I spray the bugs in the evening when the sun isn't so intense, and then I rinse it off with water the next morning. It's only gonna kill the bugs you spray it directly on, so there's no reason to leave it on the plant. Some soaps are harsher on the plant than others, like for example, dish soap is pretty harsh. What I usually use is a mixture of castile soap and neem oil, but there are lots of other insecticidal soaps and oils that are effective as well. The mix I usually use is one teaspoon of castile soap and one teaspoon of neem oil mixed into a quart of water. There are also pre-made insecticidal soaps that you can buy. One brand I've used in the past is called Safer brand insecticidal soap. Caterpillars can be controlled using the organic products BT or Spinosad. I'll put links to the organic pest control products I use in the description below the video. As always, I caution you to use pesticides of any kind sparingly and take care to only spray the pests that are causing problems so that you don't harm your beneficial insects, pollinators, or butterflies. I wish you all lots of success with your fall gardens. Happy gardening!